30 percent of the homes that were bought in recent markets were paid for in cash. 30 percent. And this brings up another topic. America has devolved into two classes. I'm not even going to say rich and poor and the millionaires and billionaires. Mm -mm. No, it's bigger than that. The two classes are those who have the two classes are those who have and those who do not. It's just that simple. Those who have stuff and those who do not. Um, one of the things that I'm finding to be really alarming, Elon Musk made a comment about the riots and stuff that was going off. The Joker in America and a lot of people are talking about the Roman Empire and all this other stuff. <laughs> who are these people who are talking about this? These people who are struggling, the people who are in that second part of America, the folks who don't have the people who are struggling, the people who are making these TikTok videos. And I'm going to say it. I find the fact that as an adult, your first thing to do is to go to TikTok to make a video talking about how bad your life is, how much you're struggling, the price of cheese, the price of dog food, the price of eggs, all of these things, the price of gas and rent and all this other stuff. All right. Let, let me just say this. Right now we're having the sale on the man program. The link is below. And uh, this morning, the last few days I've been waking up with a lot of people because I had a 24 hour sale. And I actually said the price was going to the sale was for 24 hours. And I had people who were like, well, is you know, I went in and the price changed. Is that the price or was it? No. Like, look, let me just say this. If you don't go ahead and get in once the future stuff breaks, you're going to be pissed that you didn't get in. And once again, you got from today until Sunday to get in at this price. And I can tell you after Sunday, the price is going up. So don't be emailing me with these whiny, beggy emails because you slow. I don't know what it is with some folks who want to wait to the last minute and then they go check and it's like, oh, it changed. Yeah, it did. So go ahead and get in now. Yet 30 percent of the homes that sold in recent times were paid for in cash. And all these people were not millionaires and billionaires. That's a large number. And that represents the other side of America, the people who have. I've been in the real estate market for a minute, and then I finally made a decision. And essentially, you got to shop around because I was just looking today. Uh, I got a really good deal. But essentially, one of the things that happens is, and let, let's just talk about myself. I know how to shop. I know how to find deals. And I know how to do comparison analysis. And I already knew the situation I was looking at. I almost bought a $3 million condo. And my, me and my real estate agent looked at it. The deal was kind of sketchy because uh, what the owner wanted and it, it just didn't make any sense. And then I did my research. High rise condos do not appreciate like a standalone house just doesn't. And townhouses don't appreciate. So that was part of my decision to back out of that deal. And one of the things that I am beginning to see is part of the two Americas. When I put up my video that most millionaires are educated, this weighs heavily in buying houses, starting businesses, making investments. Um, I don't think I've ever talked about this because essentially when I was on that kick where I was going to start trading, I actually got two brokerage accounts and I actually put money in them and I bought some stocks and I just been sitting on them. And it's interesting because I bought Apple at 150 and I think Apple is currently, let's see, I don't even look at it. Apple stock price. What is Apple doing? Let me go ahead and okay. So I bought at one fifty, 
and Apple is now at 173. So I made $23 per share of stock. And I'm not even looking at it because that's not my main driver of revenue. But I got two brokerage accounts. I, I got a dividend paying stock in the other one. And um, I am just really, really looking at the education of the two classes. Yesterday, I put up a video talking about how the gig economy should work because I saw a lot of people when I put up my video talking about failed men, DoorDash is waiting on you, bro. And because I know how to set up a holding company, I know how to set up an operating company, I know how to do business banking, I know how to get business credit cards. I know how to get business lines of credit. I know how to get business loans. I actually know this stuff. I know it. And because this this is one of the things that just cracks me up. You get a lot of people who talk about stuff that other folks are doing from researching and watching YouTube videos, even though they've never done it. I find that really interesting. And this is one of the things that separates the classes. Um, once again, I talk about business because I actually have a business. I do business. I'm actually in the business realm and uh, I start businesses. Uh, my my biggest faux pas was the car rental business. And you actually got to see it in live and in living color. So with the first class, let's call it the class of people who have. We're not going to go millionaires and billionaires because it's much bigger than that. But um, these are this is an educated group of people. Uh, this is a group of people who are doing things. And with the lower class, going with the people who will comment about things that they have never done, things that they don't know about, that's lower class thinking. And I'm not trying to, you know, he trying to talk about this. No, once again, I'm just stating what you are. If you're going to come on the YouTube video, leave a comment about something you saw in the YouTube video as actually, if it was relevant fact that you actually did this stuff, uh, that's part of the lower class or the, the second class. Let's go ahead and say first class have second class do not have. And this is where we're devolving or yeah, de evolving into these two cool classes, because with this thing with people rioting and stealing in the streets, this has been a big problem. This didn't just start. This happened during the pandemic. You had people stealing like crazy and like Target and some other stores. They just like, we're going to close these stores. We're not going to try to fight this problem because it's just too big of a problem. And who are these people who are stealing? The have nots. The have nots. It's gotten so bad that the have nots feel that it's perfectly appropriate to get together in a group and go rob a store. And in these TikTok videos, you hear people hinting at it. I don't believe in stealing, but you got to do what you got to do. This is lower class or the have not class. Let's call it, you know, the have the haves and the have nots. Uh, the have not class. This is where you're going to see a lot of debauchery. This is where you're going to see a lot of pain. This is where you're going to see a lot of situations because you know uh, one of the things that I did and I am really really glad that I did this is I've stopped sharing way I don't share nowhere near as much information as I used to and during the comments you have people you can't afford that place <laughs> that's why you moving and I'm selling the Porsche, I'm selling the Rolex, I'm selling all my stocks because I'm broke. <laughs> I love these. And th this is, once again, this is the thought process of the have-nots. Because one of the things that I see with the have-nots is, you know, let, let's kind of talk about this. Uh, I, I saw this comment. I know people with millions who don't have a luxury car and they don't live in a mansion. And I'm just sitting there like, really, let's go ahead and have that discussion because this is, fits very neatly into the haves and the have nots. There's about 22 million uh, 
uh, 22 million millionaires, okay? And once you start to do the cost comparison and you pull out all the millionaires who are millionaires due to their home ownership, millionaires due to their stock options, it's about 2 million, all right? So it's 2 million millionaires, right? All right, so how many people are in this country? How many citizens do we have in the United States? 332 million people. So out of that 332 million people, we have 2 million millionaires, and these will be millionaires who actually have millions. I would say a net worth of 5 million or more. And personally, when I was in Sandy Springs, I kind of noticed something that once the homeless population, like homeless people are literally everywhere. Uh, when I was living in Sandy Springs and I'm going back, um, I saw two homeless people who just kind of hung out and that was it. They were in, uh, for years and years, just two. Now I can't count all of the homeless people. And the people of Sandy Springs on the community board next door and everything, there's all kinds of discussions because, see, here's the thing. And this is why this person who I know people with millions, I would say to your face, if you, I, we ever had the pleasure to meet, you are straight up lying because for you to be a person to know many people with millions of dollars, this was meaning these are people that. You've had this conversation that they're really open and friendly with you. And I know that rich people don't act like a lot of rich people kind of move in silence. They would not just sit there and tell you, oh, yeah, I got millions of dollars. Because one of the things is that, as I have learned and many other rich people have learned, is the hate is real. So rich people typically are careful on who they divulge knowledge to. So for you to know multiple people with millions of dollars, you would have to be an investment analyst or stockbroker or another rich person based upon your subject and uh, the way you worded that paragraph. You're not that educated. So I'm just sitting there like, why do people come here and lie? Because essentially, once again, the conversation with the haves and the have nots. Um, there are many people who come to this channel and talk about, you know, and this 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 is the have nots, the have nots. Everybody don't want to be rich. This is a common phrase I see in the comments. Everybody don't want to be rich. Yet before I switched the channel up, what was the channel about? Starting the business, getting rich. But for some reason, and I actually I know exactly what I did when I posted the dating content. I got a lot of people who were not interested in starting a business, not interested in getting rich. They didn't care about that. Only thing they cared about was the dating. And that's how I got this mixed matched audience. And literally, I will see, you know, everybody ain't interested in being rich or what you think is rich. Or I saw the funniest, funniest. You know, I'm not even going to mention that. I'm going to let that alone. But this whole knowledge base that there's a group of people out there who are not trying to self-improve. Getting rich is self-improvement, is moving from where you were to where you want to be. And this whole notion, and this is once again, this is the mindset of the have nots. Everybody ain't trying to get rich. I just want a chicken plate. Give me some wings, some fries and a nice beer. This the, the have not class wants to sit back and be comfortable. That's the have not class. That's the have not thinking. And as someone said, the worthless people. Now, let's go ahead and have this conversation. The worthless people or the demo people and the have nots. That's two different groups. Because everyone that's not in the have not crap and the have not class is not a thug or someone disreputable. They're just poor. So we can't say that everyone that's in the have not class is downright disrespectful. But we can say that the majority of the thinking, because I'm getting ready to say something that's going to piss off a lot of people right now 
everyone is trying to start a YouTube channel. Everyone's trying to start a YouTube channel. Now, we got to go way, way back for all this to make sense. Back in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, when they would find a movie star, they would go to the Midwest and find someone named Otis Haslaw, right? And they bring him to Hollywood and say, Otis is handsome. And they would change his name. His name would go from Otis Hashlaw to Stacy Dash. They would give him a grooming. They would dress him a certain way. They would dress him up because they wanted to present the best interest to America, right? Right now, and this is one of the things, and this is one of the reasons I'm leaving this building, is you have people who have access to money, but they don't have access to class. They don't know how to dress. They don't know how to speak. They don't know how to present themselves. And this is one of the things you're seeing on YouTube. You got someone who, how can I say this? I'm going to say it like this. You got someone who doesn't look like Webb, doesn't have any measure of wealth. Their presentation, I'll give you an example, and I'm not mentioning any names, but there was these two guys who were doing how to get business credit. And the business credit niche on YouTube is swamped. And there was this one guy, young guy, he had the curls, the locks, there were braids. He had braids. He wore glasses and he would come on here and he would talk about how to get high limit business credit. And someone like me would not even look at him and take him serious. Because number one, I was like, what does this fool know about business credit? He don't know how to dress. He doesn't know how to pronounce anything. And this is one of the things that cracked me up about this guy. He would present things in his videos that he would not do because, you know, I wouldn't get it because the interest rate is too high. So I was just sitting there like, OK. And there was another guy, totally different presentation, very professional look. And his channel is like three months old, 25,000 subscribers. This first guy who's been on YouTube almost a year, he's got like 2,000 subscribers. And once again, it, it makes sense because with the have not class, they don't know how to dress. They don't know how to speak. They don't know how to present themselves. And they'll come on YouTube looking like hot trash. And then they'll be shocked why their videos are not performing. And it's also deeper than just their looks. Uh, there, there's a whole bunch of things that go into starting a YouTube channel that many people are unaware of and have no clue how these things work. So one of the things that's happening in the have not class is, you know, we, let's use real estate. Real estate is a good example. There's uh, a lot of people in the have not class and there are some people, a dual income couple, two income couple cannot afford the average house in America right now because they're in the have not class. They're in the have not class. They have good credit, they have money to put down, they have a six figure income between the husband and wife, and they don't make enough money to actually afford a house. So part of the have not class thinking is prices should come down because the average person cannot afford America. All right, let me give you a history lesson. When this country was being formed, do you think it was average people who came over here and formed this country? These were exceptional. Do you think the people, the immigrants who come to America and become successful are normal? These are exceptional people. The folks who came over here back in the day on the, the pilgrims and their, these were different and exceptional people. They were average. America has never been for the average. Now, there was a period of time after World War II where America became very industrialized. And with the GI Bill and stuff, people went to college, people went to work in these factories. And America as a country was growing and the economy and the citizens grew with it. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, my granddaddy was able to work one job. Grandma stayed at home, raised three kids, sent them to college and he got to retire. Well, let's go ahead and look at that America. Granddaddy has something called a pension. Now, what is a pension? A pension is a retirement plan that your company gives you that you do not have to contribute to. So it was a totally different world. The 401k, in my opinion, a lot of people got robbed. <laughs> a lot of people got robbed with a 401k. But if you look at America as a whole, 
Who made the money? It was the exceptional people. It was the forebearers. It was like you're starting to see it. Like right now, you're starting to see some in the NFL. Almost, I know there's 36 teams. I'm not sure. I think it's 36. But there's 12 to 16 black quarterbacks in the NFL right now starting. What? Watch what happens in about 10 years. In 10 years, the majority of the quarterbacks in the NFL will be black. The majority. And this is a change that's happening. You know where you see it? Uh, college. Uh, one of this guy, he's the Washington State, Washington quarterback, Phoenix. And you have uh, the Dino, uh, um, God, uh, prime top Deion Sanders' son. You have a lot of exceptional black quarterbacks who will be coming out of college in the next 10 years. And you will mark my words in the next 10 years, the majority of quarterbacks in the NFL will be black. And it's just going to. But this is part of the, the reckoning. This is part of the change. And guess what? Like Bryce Young, when you looked up in the stands, you saw mom and dad uh, to to the Volga. You saw mom and dad. You, you're starting to see. The shape up of America based upon a two, a stable two parent home, which is part of the haves and the have nots. Divorce is rampant. The have nots. You have men. Uh, I'm going to become a passport, bro, because I cannot find a decent, traditional woman. And that, that just cracks me up because you want a traditional woman, right? All right. Let's go ahead. This is the have not class. Tradition is you as the man, you pay the bills. And as a woman, your woman follows your lead because you pay the bills. You take a leadership position. These men who want these traditional women with traditional values are not traditional. <laughs> Excuse me. They're not traditional men. It's hilarious because. I'm 56 years old and I've never had an issue finding a girlfriend. Not one issue. Yet there's loads and loads and loads of videos on YouTube talking about passport bras and we got to go to these other countries to find these submissive, uh, cough, cough, broke ass women to hook up with. And this, this is one of the things that you just will not see. But once again, the have nots. Virtually everyone who's in the passport bra or something is a have not virtually all of them. And I've heard the stories like we're going to these other countries to start businesses. OK. You can't start a business here in the United States, but you're going to go to Brazil or you're going to go to Thailand. and You're going to start a business. Really? Why is that? Because you have more money than their locals. You have more money. So it's easier to start a business over there. It's easier. And this is the thinking of the have nots and the, the people who have like once again, a friend of mine, and I've talked about him a lot. Son just graduated from Georgia Tech, working for Apple, making 200 K. Uh, when his dad dies, his kid's probably going to inherit 20 million. The haves, the haves are getting married. The haves are having multiple children. The haves are not because once again, I would say uh, I would put the have nots at 70 percent of the country, 70 percent of the country and the haves at about 30 percent. And this is why I don't include just billionaires and millionaires, because it's a much larger segment of the haves, because once again, I haven't felt inflation. I don't even. Like I order out, which is more expensive than going to the grocery store. So I, I have not failed inflation, but because I'm part of the have, I actually have stuff. I have things going on. I have a business. I have assets. I have things. I have things going on. So I'm part of the have class. And one of the things, and this has created such a big problem on this YouTube channel. I'm a have and I'm talking to a lot of people who don't have. And this is where the fights and the, the strange and twisted comments come from, because I'm going to say this. If you are a half not, 
more than likely you do not believe that you can be successful. More than likely, you just don't believe that you can be successful. You do not believe that you can work hard and build anything. And many of you believe that you have a very short life expectancy. So you got to get all you can get. And this is the thinking of the have nots. I'm going like once again, have not thinking. You got this woman. Y'all have not one, two, maybe three kids. You live in the same house. You share money. But you don't want to get married because it's like, I ain't ready for marriage, but we can have kids. We can live in the same house. We can share money, but we cannot get the legal definition of marriage because if it go wrong, you get half. Half of nothing is nothing, you know. So we'll be having more conversations about the have nots because this is going to be the class that's going to protest the loudest. They're going to be losing their minds. They're going to be they're going to be very vocal because now we have something that the have nots have not had before. We have social media where they can go to TikTok, they can go to Instagram, they can go to YouTube, they can go to Snapchat, they can go and voice their concerns and put out a video and say, look, I am sick and tired of being broke versus doing what a have would do. OK, I'm broke. And the have would sit down and think of a ways to do things so they wouldn't be broke. But the have nots, these are the people who are going to TikTok. These are the people who are whining about being broke. And this is something I predicted was going to happen when I was having my pandemic talks because the people were sitting at home, smoking weed, playing video games, having sex versus educating themselves because they are a have not. The have nots are the predominant part of our society. And I, I was watching one of these, the real estate market's going to crash videos. And the real estate market ain't going to crash no time soon. It's not going to happen. But if you are a have not, and if you have low education, and you're not aware how the world works, you will buy this stuff because like wrestling. I never really watched wrestling because I knew wrestling was fake. But they have not love wrestling. They love the gore. They love all this stuff. And now there's something that's more real. MMA, mixed martial arts. Uh, that's real because I'm seeing people get messed up in the ring. But they have not devolved to low, in, low mental activities. And this is one of the things. This is why. You know, I, I speak about this. All the people in this building who got evicted, I can like when I leave here, I'm going to do a video talking about living in the city and why I, it was great in the beginning and it just turned the doo doo toward the end. But which society do you want to live in? Do you want to live in the have not society or do you want to live in the have society? That's a choice that you can make. Because if you want to live in the have not society, you're going to be struggling. You're going to be worried about the price of rent because uh, essentially I will tell you a little story. When I was looking for a place to live, I noticed something very strange. Uh, I would see homes in certain zip codes and I would be shocked at their values. And many of those homes were still on the market. And then. I've noticed that you would have someone in Southwest Atlanta, they would price a home for the same price of a home in Sandy Springs. Now the homes in Sandy Springs are selling, but the homes in the rest of Atlanta, like I give you, there's this place called La Vista Park. They have a lot of modern homes over there. These homes been sitting on the market for a year. And I'm gonna tell you what's missing. If you move to Sandy Springs, you can have a house, you can find a high income job and you can have a house on enough on land. Your house will not be so close together that if you broke wind, your neighbor could smell it. So I understand what's selling, but many people in the marketplace are caught up on the hype and many folks have their houses priced way too high, way too high for what you can get. Because I'm just looking at um, what's out there. And the number of houses that are small 
that they want all this money for is cracking me up because I personally would not buy something like that. I just wouldn't do it. But once again, these are part of the people who are part of that have not class. They're kind of on the cusp. They had they, they somehow got a hold of a house and they're trying to sell it, but they don't understand how the marketplace works because they're a have not. Uh, we're going to be having many, many conversations about the have nots because the haves. Once again, haves are getting married. They're having children. They're building ho- and they're and they're buying houses. And let, let's talk about this. The biggest sector of people who are buying houses is the the baby boomers. Why? Baby boomer had a house, sold it, made a lot of money. And then he was like, I'm out. So a baby boomer who lives in California, let's see, bought this house for 150, turned around, sold it for two million, moved to uh, Texas, maybe Louisiana, maybe Florida, bought another house for a million, paid cash. So he bought this house, paid cash, got a million in the bank. This is what's going on. And these baby boomers, many of them are in the have category. They have assets. They have money. And they have somewhat of an attitude because one of the things that and I'll be talking about this with the gig work, a lot of younger people do not have social mores. They can't work with people. The number of videos on YouTube I've seen, but I have no friends. I'm alone. I know exactly why, because you weren't raised right. You weren't raised to be sociable. Uh, One of the things I would do is we would do as a kid, as a family, we would go visit people. That's like. A lot of people don't go visit people. A lot of people don't have dinners because they're socially awkward. And this is a lot of people in the have not group. And one of the things that happened and you'll have some folks who have who are socially awkward. But essentially, you get to make a choice on where you're going to live. You get to make a choice where you want to live, what where you want to be. And I choose to be amongst the halves. This is why I'm going back to Sandy Springs. And, you know, during the whole process, my real estate agent, they always show me stuff in other places. And I I don't want to live there. I don't want to live there. I don't want to live on that side of town. And then, you know, we finally got something that I was like, okay, this will work. And we were able to conceive a very good deal because the people who were selling had to sell. They had to. So we were able to work out something very favorable in my situation. But. One of the things that we will have going on is this conversation of the have and the have nots. And once again, you got two choices. You can be part of the have nots or you can be part of the haves. It all falls on you. So right now I'm having a sale and it ends Sunday. So if you want to be part of the man program and the new training and stuff that we're going to get into, then you definitely want to go ahead and sign up because right now there's a lot of work, a lot of things for you to do in the program. So once again, the price goes up after Sunday.